Coming to you live from the capital city of the great state of Texas, overlooking downtown Austin. What a view we have. And the University of Texas, of course. Welcome to the show. And the multicast that knows the pride and tradition of the Texas football program will never be entrusted to the timid or the weak. We are a product of the Republic of Football on Dave Campbell's Texas Football Podcast Network. We're powered by Grande Equipment. You can also find us at Horn FM and the YouTube page there. And we are broadcasting live from the Austin Radio Network in Austin, Texas. I'm Aaron Hogan, as usual. Uh, driving the driving the ship here, but tonight Mike Craven enjoying a much deserved vacation hiking in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. So we called uh, into the bullpen and look what we found uh, from the Forty Acres himself. He is a lifetime Longhorn. He's a legend, the pride of Mark, Texas, and currently a liaison to President Jay Hartzell as his side gig, side hustle. Also has a day job. He is our great friend Quan Cosby. Do you see what's up? Not much, man. Staying busy. Uh, it's kind of slowing down with baseball and track we just had the national championship but it's busy over there on campus <laughs> legislative session there's all kinds of things going yeah, on yeah you're so. you're a busy guy you got a full-time job selling yeah. corporate insurance correct absolutely and then a liaison you have a really long title but you uh, help <laughs> raise funds and work with jay hartzell to uh how would you describe your your relationship with jay and how that you know, how you help out the, the athletic department and the school well jay is the man man we we're so fortunate because there's been that's what i think people forget between Powers and Fimvis and Jay and, you know, you have Patterson and then my man was it Perrin and it, it's been Hold a on. What's up? Oh, I did start this. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah there's been ahead. a lot of dang on turnover over there on campus. And so leadership was a big deal from the top down. And I think we have a phenomenal leader, certainly in L-Type and then Hartzell. And then, of course, CDC is busy as well. Um, I think the, the athletic portion of my uh, – Job is to call and argue with CDC all the time. But, um, no, nah, man, I, ultimately he's doing a good job. And we're in the mix again for the Director's Cup when he likes to talk a lot about that. And it is a big deal. So long title, that's a higher ed thing. But ultimately I do what hearts will want me to do. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And uh, it leans on you. Uh, coming up, you know, we break the the, uh, the podcast, the multicast, into four quarters. And so in our second quarter, we'll get Quan's thoughts on the Texas team in 2023. Uh, been around the team a little bit. The vibe, specifically on the offensive side, which might be uh, the best set of receiving weapons since you and Jordan Shipley were shredding Big 12 defenses back in the day. Uh, we'll talk about that in our third quarter. It'll be time for our uh, college football hot, spicy takes brought to you by our friends at On Point Spices. And in the fourth quarter, we'll wrap it up with the, the big conversations, four of them, our final four big conversations surrounding Texas football. I want to tell you the multicast that keeps you on top of all things Texas football and Texas athletics, a product of the Republic of Football and Dave Campbell's Texas Football Network. We are powered by Grande Equipment, our great friends there, Wes and Weston, locally owned, independent equipment company, serving Texas and the world's equipment needs since 2004. They're online at grandeequipment.com. You'll also learn about our other founding partners here, uh, One Source Gas, uh, the uh, Good Times and Great Scratch Food at Hayes City Store and Ice House, On Point Spice Company, and our good friend Carlos Carrion, the Texas Mortgage Guy at thetexasmortgageguy.com. But let's get into it, the, the four quarters. We're going to get onto our first quarter, Quan, and it's brought to you by Carlos Carrion, the thetexasmortgageguy.com. And... Um, you know, we, well, I will reveal we're broadcasting and, and recording this broadcast live on a Monday night while the UT baseball team is playing right now in the uh, <laughs> Super Regional round. It's game two or the game three. The winner goes to Omaha. The loser uh, will be done with their season. It's 2 nothing Stanford early, and we'll be watching that game. If you hear like a, an outburst, uh, <laughs> that will be why from Quan or myself uh, or the team here. So. Obviously, they're trying to secure their 39th trip to the College World Series. Uh, Stanford's trying to get there again, too. Uh, but, you know, let's start with this, Quan, because, you know, just talk about what you're doing now. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, baseball was your first uh, your first gig, right? You came out of yeah. Mart High School as a multi-sport star. Um, you know, before you were a Longhorn football legend, you were on the fast track to being a, maybe the starting center fielder in the outfield for the L.A. Angels of Anaheim back in the day. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about that for our audience that maybe don't know that whole story. They saw you starring for the Longhorns. But when you came out of Mart, what, what drove you to baseball? Man, you know, ultimately you want to go play pro. And coming out of Mart, the draft got drafted in six, but I told them clearly I signed to go to Texas and play baseball and football. But if they gave me a certain number, I, I'll go play some ball. <laughs> and uh, they certainly hit that number. But the weird piece of it is I, I did the whole five-year break it up. And, man, love baseball. Had a great experience with the Angels. And a funny story to when I kind of negotiated out of my contract. But 
when you go from Mark playing 30 games a year to playing 170, <laughs> counting for spring training, it gets real. You realize, you know, I still love baseball, go to a lot of UT games, Astros and even Rangers, kind of a Texas as a whole fan. But um, I got a little burnout, to say the least. Bus the bus trips. leagues. Oh, gosh. From the but, West Coast. Dude, we, we, when we were in the Pioneer League, we went to Medicine Hat, Canada. <laughs> you never want to go on a trip where you have to change bus drivers because of the law. <laughs> and we did. After 10 hours, the law at the time was they couldn't drive over 10 hours. So we met another. I was like, what in the you know what am I doing? Um, great time. Played with some great guys. Kayaspo, Ibar. So many dudes. Jeff Mathis. But. I was missing football. Every time I'd come back and have this offseason, I'd go to UT games, Baylor games, weirdly even Oklahoma games, and just miss the heck out of it. So my going into my fourth, really fourth and a half year, talked to the general manager, Tony Regans, and I said, all right, we knew this day might come. And uh, he said, there's a problem. You're under contract. So <laughs> he wasn't wrong. But they screwed up a little bit with my contract. So I negotiated out of it, got my attorneys to look it over. They were wrong. And um, he told me, hey, man, Darren Ersad had two more years on his contract. We don't want to resign him. He's getting older. His career is over. Defensively, you're ready. But, you know, I start switch hitting when I got there. So he said, so a couple more years, go to double A this year, work on that, and we think you're going to be the dude. I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever. Y'all are full of crap. <laughs> Truth of the matter is, so I ended up getting out of the contract coming back, but hell, they did not sign Darren Erstrat. And they went like three or four years without a center fielder before they got Tory Hunter. So just and they crazy. they got Tory a big bank. Oh, man. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> I'm trying not, not to, to live on regrets. Um, oh, not just gave him big bank. The money I gave back to come back to this dang on place. So my, my part-time job probably has a lot to do with trying to recoup some of the money I gave to come back. Um, but, no, nah, it, it was it was cool, man. I fortunately um, pray about a lot of my decisions, and I think it was the right thing. And ultimately, the national championship, you can't put a price to that. So it was it was certainly the right decision. Well, it's a great one. I mean, Darren Erstad, remember, he was a punter at Nebraska. So he was yeah, a football, yeah, baseball dude. guy, too, and a great athlete. And, um, yeah, I mean, the you, we all have to make those decisions in life. I mean, uh, the fork in the road comes, and you chose Texas to play football and come back and play for Mac Brown. I, and um, we were doing, you know, Bucky and I were doing the radio show here in Austin when you came back, and uh, you know, we we knew you and you were a recruit. I mean, everybody yeah. was recruiting Quan Cosby out of Mark, um, you know, to play. And you said you committed to Texas to play both sports and uh, went off to play baseball, so everybody knew you. But uh, you came back at uh, what 22? 20, yeah. 22 years old. Twenty two. Um, when we played the Natty, I was twenty three already. So a 23-year-old freshman, and, man, it was cool, dude. I laughed because Coach Brown, kudos to him. And when I got back and I was like, Coach, I'm thinking about it. He said, I told you when you left, you have a scholarship. So he kept his word. So did Bob Stoops. So did Philip Fulmer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it was cool coming back older and doing those trips because you cut out all the BS. Yeah. And um, it was, dude, it was, it was actually pretty amazing. That's honestly. awesome. Um, but, uh, no, I made that decision, and uh, like I said, it was – they, they, it was a leap of faith for them because I truly hadn't touched football in five years, and I had a lot of work to do to try to get back in football shape. Well, and you came to one heck of a team. I mean, uh, couldn't have cherry picked a better one uh, with Vince and uh, the, that team, that program had finally come into its own, and you continued that. Let me ask you this, because obviously we saw the success on the field. If you don't remember, Quan won, played in and won four bowl games, including a national yeah. championship. Do we have a highlight of Quan here? This mm -hmm. might re uh, re rekindle some great memories. 2009 yeah. Fiesta Bowl. Uh, the great Craig Way on the call. There's Colt McCoy. Let's hear this one. Fire this one up, Nolan. Boy, from the shotgun. He fires over the middle. Caught. Inside the 20. 10. 5. Touchdown, Texas. Blood Cosby. Cosby scored. The Longhorns take the lead with 16 seconds. Terrible penalty. Yeah, they gave you a penalty on Dude, that. Be, Jumping in the end zone? Funny story, Apple White. <laughs> so I do that. They give me a penalty. I'm arguing like crazy. I get to the sideline, and Apple White's throwing his freaking headset, and I hear him. Are you kidding me? That guy has never showboated in his life. And I kind of took him on it. I was like, damn, I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> am I a square? What? Apple White, I'm taking that different, dude. A bad penalty, but you need to reword that. And it was, he bust out laughing 
go from, you know, apple red to bust out laughing because I was almost offended by that. But um, it was so cool, man, to, to finish like that. Craig, we know he's made a billion amazing calls, but he said that about as good as it, he could. What a way to finish your career here is this pretty um, Disney-ish and, and pretty cool. Beat Ohio State in that Fiesta Bowl. Uh, the the game winning touchdown, no one will ever forget it, and uh, that, was a t- that was a tough way for that year to end. I mean, that you could have been a national championship year. We know that. <laughs> I don't want to bring that up, the sour subject, <laughs> but uh, uh, could have been another trip to a national championship. Then off to seven years in the National Football League. Let me ask you, coming back as a 22 year old freshman, he almost 23. You know, we're we're now talking about NIL deals, and we're not yeah. talking about you know. And one of the, look, there's a lot of issues with NIL. We know that. The governor just signed a new bill that is going to loosen a lot of restrictions here in the state of Texas for A&M and Texas and all the schools in the state that play. Uh, Obviously, that's driven some federal conversation about federal legislation. The feds are close. uh, Because it's, you know, it's it's a very, um, it's an opportunity now for the collectives and the, the one funds of the world to be able to raise more and more money. Uh, so, but that that's a bigger conversation. Uh, but you know, the one thing that I keep hearing from people who run those collectives in the NILs and are bringing the student athletes together with business people in the area, and they're doing charitable events. They're mm-hmm. they're trying to raise money, and you know, before it was kind of hands off. You couldn't the athletes couldn't be around. I always felt like you were the best at being an NIL guy before because you maybe being a more mature player, right. more mature person, already having done contracts and bought yourself out of a major league contract, you, know, you understood the power of Texas better than most. And so you got to know the people in the in the luxury boxes and the people that were important to Texas football. And when your football, your NFL career ended, you have a, an opportunity to come back and, and work with a lot of those folks, and that's been beneficial to you. It's been huge, man. And <laughs> when I came back at 22, 23, and the 17-year-olds are playing video games, and they're all the time. I was getting to know some people. And and it was so cool because DeLoss was here, of course. Yep. Powers was here. Brown was here. I had, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I pretty much had a standing quarterly lunch, meeting, dinner, whatever, with one of those guys. Oh, wow. And so— That you arranged? Yeah, that— um, me and Coach Brown. I told Coach Brown, and he treated me like a coach. I remember my first conversation when I finally signed. I was like, hey, Coach B, um, this old jester thing. He's like, Juan, you've lived in five states. You do not have to stay in the dorm. I was like, thank <laughs> God. And, and it was huge because Jamal actually stayed with me for the first summer that we got here for, for many reasons, but it worked out. So we got to know each other really well. And um, then I'd go meet with DeLoss, and then he'd introduce me to Jaster or somebody. I'd, I'd meet with Powers more than probably any of them, and he became a huge mentor as well. Outside of, of course, Coach Brown. So I was doing that. You come older, man. You just understand what that means. And when I came back, the recruiting cycle was different. But Coach Brown talked about this lifetime network, the NIL piece of it. And let's be real, there was some NIL before NIL. <laughs> yep. And um, Texas wasn't that. What Texas sold, I, and being older, I was like, some places given signing bonuses. For me, Texas was an annuity. And they made a promise. It was going to mature through the years, and then you get to know that network, and that's essentially how it happened. So talking to Jordan Whitten about it, talking to a lot of the current players about that perspective, even with the NIL piece of it, I was like, dude, y'all don't even have rules. You can go hang out with anybody. (laughs) They can buy you meals. You can do anything you want. So taking a little bit more advantage of it, and kudos to Texas because they still manage it uh, a decent amount. The fans are getting involved because with that new bill, the good old Aggies, they would love to get buy them another team. Twelfth man the plus 12th found man. Man. Yeah. And then of course we have we have a big little pot to, to, to work with as well with, with the foundation we created. So that's Wild Wild West. Because of that bill, the feds, I don't think they'll we'll get through this year without new legislation passing on their end. Had that conversation um at the tower today. So that little things like that that we, we talk about and we, we pay attention to at the tower. But uh, translate to the sports slash, you know, campus experience. And the coolest thing, um, as amazing as Admiral McRaven was, he said it best. Sports is the front door of that place. And so my role with UT, certainly more academic. We're on Dean searches. We're on all this stuff. But it filters into certainly sports and going to see the national championship track the other day and all those things. So, yeah, man, it's. I'm glad that door's open. We know, again, it's, it needs some even more molding and cleaning up. But some WD-40. Oh, goodness. <laughs> like squeak. a lot of a few cans <laughs> yeah. and some oil. 
But um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it's where it is, and I like to see it fixed for the most part or cleaned up. But it, it's really cool the way I know UT is taking advantage of those relationships. Yeah, and I, it, you know, you know this because you're just the tower today, and they're there all the time. Uh, you know, when not if, when the federal legislation comes, they'll be ready for that too. I mean, oh, they, they know it's coming. And uh, if you miss that, they're, of course, Nick Saban and a parade of coaches went to Washington, D.C. And look, I, I agree. I mean, I don't think each, you know, teams play across state lines in different states and, and conferences. You have to have somewhat of a, a set of rules that everybody yeah. plays by. Uh, you can't be state by state, which it is right now. And that's that's on the NCAA for not having a plan for this when it came, and Surprise. Uh, obviously, and now they're asking and begging the uh, NCAA or the feds to do something about it. So Tommy Tuberville to the rescue. Tommy Tuberville and Joe Manchin, the uh, senator from uh, West Virginia and Alabama, are <laughs> going to irony of Tuberville. <laughs> yeah, Tuberville. <laughs> I just thought that was. I mean, I, I mean, the 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 scene of Southern Politics. football coaches going to Washington D.C. asking for help from the feds to monitor football is like, wow, there's some dripping with irony. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's coming, and uh, I think they'll be ready to go. Uh, but, again, I'll say that. that th- that's the one thing from everybody I've talked to about NIL. You know, I, we covered enough athlete, athletes at Texas who I thought they were in a bubble. I mean, the, the UT would keep them in a bubble. Yeah. Ricky Williams is an example. Vince Young at some level. Yeah. You know, they were bubble-wrapped, and, you know, they, we had a hard time getting access to even talk to them. I know that, you know, coaches were so fearful of them talking to boosters and you know getting in trouble with the ncaa you know those guys went off to the nfl and you know didn't really know what they were doing uh now as you said with whittington and a lot of these guys that are already having their deals the one thing that happens we had the great story of the uh the texas linebacker uh tucker dorsey last year diamante tucker dorsey who came in for one year from james madison met uh, gary keller from keller williams realty and now it's on the fast track to being a real estate guy because he got to meet him. Uh, Gary put him under his wing. And those are the kind of things that can happen. To your point, I love how you say you can get a signing bonus, which will be great for a little bit, whether it was under the table or over the table now. Right. But the annuity to, to meet and build these connections with some of the more powerful people in Austin and throughout the state of Texas is huge. Dude, we have 1.1 folks who claim Texas. We have probably, I think, close to 600 actual graduates. 600,000. Yeah. 1.1 million, 600,000 actual graduates. So there's a lot of opportunity to, because again, let's be real. We know not for long league. It's just, and the difference is one of my roles at UT is bringing our folks back. All that turnover, you know, the Aaron Rosses or the Rack, they don't even know who to reach out to over there. Bianco is pretty consistent, but even his role is a little hybrid now, football, CDC. So um, I'm a little bit of the contact to, to get to know folks and, we did a speaking of Jamal, we did his camp Friday. Friday morning. Um, came back from Dallas from my day job and then did his camp Friday morning. And me, Rack Huff, we just kind of went and grabbed some lunch and we were talking about that. He's like, Hey Q, um, you know anybody to this? I'm thinking about that. Clearly they have the cupcakes and things like that. But it's actually effort for us to get back. Uh, Corey Redding met a friend of mine and client. Um, in the oil and gas energy space, and he's head over heels in that. So, ironically, all of these guys that know so many of our alum from a current player, and of course, we like to say, and they're not even winning yet. But, um, <laughs> and, uh, but I mean, the, the Corys, the, the guys who won 10 games every year that won a national championship, they're still trying to get to know alumni. So, you're right on with just really the, the silos of our donor base versus athletes when ultimately there's a lot of synergy that could be created, like the Keller Williams story. MJ McFarland, he's in real estate. Yeah. Him and Cosmo are super tight. And, I mean, stories and stories of it just being a better situation and deal for big picture. Um, ultimately, the, the small picture is you hope to go to the league, but most don't. And big picture, getting to know business. The amount of guys who graduated from McCombs since this has happened mm-hmm. is just it's changing the game. So that's the very, very positive piece of it. No question. Sam Ellinger being one of those McCombs yep. School of Business graduates. Uh, and that's, you know, for you probably heard me on the radio, Quan, arguing for years and years. I wasn't arguing for the 4% where they were going to go to the NFL. I was arguing for the 96% that exactly. were never going to play in the National Football League, but they're putting their bodies on the line. They're, they're risking, you know, life and limb to play football for this university, blood, sweat, and tears to – you know, fill the seats and and win football games. You know that that's this is their avenue, and uh, you know those guys can still go off and play in the National Football League. And you hope there's more and more of those guys coming. 
but it really is the positive side. It needs a lot of fixing. We understand yeah. that. Let's all understand. Uh, but, you know, there's no NCAA to come to the rescue. The feds, who knows? But, you know, I'll give Texas and, and others credit. You know, wallets without a rule, take advantage of it. Yeah. <laughs> take advantage of it. And with that in mind, we'll talk about the uh, in our second quarter. That's going to wrap up our first quarter. It's brought to you by our great friend Carlos Carrion and the, the, the TexasMortgageGuy.com. We're going to come back and uh, hit our second quarter. We'll talk some actual Texas football summer of 2023. Where are they going? Let me tell you about Carlos. Uh, Carlos, he was in here last week with our conversation and our sponsor visit, our founding partner visit. When it's time for your new mortgage or refi, Longhorn fans should you know, be working with Longhorn fans when you're working to do that, right? Well, they're, if he's an expert in the field like Carlos is, just makes sense and works better. So much better to work with like-minded people uh, who know the business but also know the lay of the land. Carlos is a lifelong Austinite. Went to St. Edwards, would have gone to UT, but he wasn't good enough at baseball to play for Coach Garrido back in the day. So he went to St. Ed's, uh, but over seven, or going on 10 years in the industry now, uh, not just here to provide you with a quote. He's your guide to help solve problems, strategize one of the most important decisions of your life. And uh, great communicator, great person. He was in here last week. If you missed our episode. Carlos Carrion. Find him uh, at thetexasmortgageguy.com. That's thetexasmortgageguy.com. He's just way to find him. You can call him 512 769 0552. But just go to that website, thetexasmortgageguy.com. Tell him we sent him the Eyes on Texas Multicast. Carlos Carrion. Absolutely. We'll take great care of you and can't wait to hear your story of success uh, with Carlos. The Eyes on Texas Multicast is available weekly on Dave Campbell's and the Horn Austin YouTube pages. It's available for download through iTunes and Spotify. And it's time for our second quarter as we crank this thing up. So, Quan, well, you, we have temp- we have you. We appreciate you coming oh, in yeah, to sure. fill in for Mike Craven this week on our multicast. And it's a lot of great stuff just then. But let's go into the second quarter, which is the current Texas football team. Uh, and I know you had a conversation with Sark today, Coach Steve Sarkeesian. You ran into him uh, talking NIL and other things. Uh, what's your overall level of optimism? You've been around this program doing sidelines on the radio for yeah. years and years when things weren't great. Um, your level of optimism. I know a lot of fans are excited, um, you know, for right for good reasons. What's your level of, uh, of where this program is? Man, I'm pretty optimistic, and I wouldn't say I drink the Kool-Aid every year, but I'm like, all right. We have the potential. Things have to shake up, but to be competitive, mainly because of where the Big 12 has been in the last few years. Sure. I'm not saying it's a bad conference, but it wasn't when I was there and there was seven conference, seven teams in the top 15. And so I've always been fairly optimistic about that piece of it, but this year is different. Um, we've seen what Sark and crew have done in recruiting, seen some guys like Jay Witt come back. We seen old boy Mitchell, you know, and that dude came from a freaking national championship team. AD Mitchell, the wide receiver. I mean, AD yeah. Mitchell, like it's like what? Two and times back to back. <laughs> the beauty of that is the leadership that he can bring. Um, you have a now sophomore tackle and O line that is as good as we've had probably since stuttered days. Well, and that's when Texas gets good, and I think any team gets good when the offensive line is good. It brings your toughness, builds your tena- builds your you know your foundation. Uh, Pro Football Focus just ranked the Longhorns with the third best returning offensive line in the country, yeah. anchored around Kelvin Banks and another guy that returned in uh, Christian Jones. Yeah, who got a lot right. better last year. Had and some I think, dog in him too. He got way better last year. Yeah, he did. He was one of the better run blockers in the Big Twelve, and pretty safe to say Kyle Flood knows what he's doing with those. I mean, and you could also argue that previous offensive line coach Herb Hand uh, struggled uh, with, with you know, that. You know, he was a lot better at barbecue from what I hear. Um, <laughs> I saw his videos he, on Instagram. He, he, was, he was busy he smoking smoke it up. Meat, and Coach Flood is busy coaching. <laughs> and so, <laughs> no, right on, man. That's the key, development. So ultimately, what's different now versus the last few years other than the obvious um, head coach and things like that, but it's development. I've seen guys get truly better. I went to a couple of practices this spring and, you know, receivers and coming out of breaks and making plays and just their attention, a couple of things, focus and then their attention to detail that has been lapsing a little bit over the over the years that, that we were average or if not even below. It's just a different feel out there, if I'm being real. Going into the spring game, I think we talked, I talked to you and Bucky about that, and I was mm-hmm. like, it feels, I'm not saying we're going to go with a natty, but I it feels zoned in. There's a level of focus and intentionality that you're just starting to see with maturity and leadership and all the above. And so Sark leading, you know, the way and, and his abilities to call plays and all the above. And then, you know, PK got way better. Some wanted to give it to, to Gary Patterson, but 
he still has the title and he's still here. So looking for him to build on that. And he had a couple of guys return too that would be huge with Ford. And um, like I think the, the transfer from Jalen Catalan. Yeah, Catalan. Ryan Watts is back. Yeah, Watts is back. So again, man, I just think we have some pieces and some young guys that are hungry enough that can fill those gaps uh, of things that we've been missing in the past. So I just think we have probably the more complete team, especially on offense, that we've had in 10 years. Even without B. John Robinson, Roshan Johnson, uh, the set of receivers as good as we've seen. And I like your word intentionality. Like when you came back from baseball and joined that team at Texas in 05, there was an intentionality to that team. You walked in and knew – there was nothing messing around. And I'm not saying this team is to that point yet with Vince, you know, pushing and, and driving the wagon. But you, you knew don't get cross here. You know, step step in and be a part of it or get that's, going. And that's the thing. It's not saying this team is there because talent is different, but the mindset can be the same. And, I, and I'm, I'm not even – they just they don't have Vince or a leader on that level or Casey or a Huff or a Ross because the cool piece about it, I was in – Probably dad bod baseball shape when I got back. <laughs> and um, those cats, A. Ross, Griffin, T. Brown, when I say we in the summer this time right now in this heat, we do our 7-on-7, seven seven, even play Texas State sometimes, and we go at it for another hour and a half, one-on-ones. And they said, dude, we got to whip you into shape. We don't have much time. Brian Carter's great. We love him. But unfortunately, he hadn't finished the season. So you may be starting <laughs> sooner than you think. I was, it was game three. <laughs> and so they weren't wrong. And that level of – you think well, that's big picture stuff. It's like, dude, you came back. You're already at, you know, number two because you're older and the hype. And they got me ready every single day. And it got better every single year. So those conversations, knowing what you need, not just the starters, but, hey, we need you ready as a backup to start the season and then go catch some punts and all the above. So – Thinking about football on that level is what we had, and you're starting to see it a little bit more. The interesting thing, I was talking to Sark once, and he's like, man, they don't watch film away from the building. And now that's changing. Okay. Um, they're, they're watching film away from the building. They're watching it in the offseason. Um, Quinn, everybody wanted to know, how's Manning? Listen, I'm not saying Manning talked Quinn into anything, but I do know a week with him on campus, the mullet was gone. And so – being in that room, even as a freshman, you can have leaders that are just a different level. And I think those different pieces of the puzzle, um, something people probably don't nerd out on like I do, Sark is a play caller, quarterbacks coach, all that stuff, and the head coach. So when Quinn have a bad series, Sark still has to be the head coach. So you don't really have that Greg Davis have a conversation with Colt and Vince moment, but you have a freshman – who thinks like a Manning about football. So that synergy that I'm telling you, Quinn starts, knock on wood, all that works out, and Manning's in the meeting. I mean, he's he's in the, the room or on the sideline. That football talk, that get over it, this is what I saw perspective that they're going to be able to add. And we haven't even talked about the phenom of Murphy. Right. We knew he had it, and we just needed him healthy, and yeah, he, that- he could be as good as anyone. So – those are the pieces, not just talking starters, but the you know because Quinn got hurt, he didn't start every game last year. Every year, hell, we were down our third quarterback at one point. So that's where I'm excited and the optimism is there because we have numbers, we have dudes, we have a staff who develops, and we have a farewell season in the Big Twelve. We have more than enough to play for. Yeah, and you know, kind of like when you guys when you got here in 05, that Ohio State game was looming. You know, early in the season, the kind of barometer, yeah. which is which I like the way you said it to the, the foresight to say, man, we're going to need you, Quan, pretty early on here because we're going to Columbus. They're going to Tuscaloosa week two. Uh, you know, you can you can put that in your mental mindset while you're getting ready during the heat of this summer, knowing you know they they got us last year by a point. We're going to their place. They've got a new head, their new offensive coordinator, new quarterback, Dude, placing a lot of players. He is linebackers. They have Let's, to be crazy. Because if, if Texas Optimism. were to find a way to win that game, which they'll be an underdog, right. Much like you guys were when you went to Columbus, you know, could set the, you know, because that, that that was the propeller for you guys. Oh, man, if we can beat the Buckeyes in Columbus at night, we can beat anybody. And, and that's, a, that's the thing a lot of people forget. We beat the Buckeyes in Columbus at night, and then we beat USC in Pasadena. I mean, it's like, dude, we basically beat them both at home. Yeah. That's why they put us up there in the ranks, and they had like 88 NFL players on both of those teams. Yeah. And so, man, it, you're right, man. That game is going to be so big. 
And I was laughing because at the track meet that I went to that we hosted, it was some Alabama personnel there. And we were honestly, as you know this very well, talking about golf courses in Alabama. But um, <laughs> Of course, got to find one. <laughs> got to find those. When I'm, I'm going to go a day early. But um, really, it, it was, they're nervous. like And rightfully so, because they saw what happened in Austin, and they had top five picks. Well, they're missing those picks. And on defense and on offense, Bryce Young was the real deal. He won that game. He won that game. He essentially told Bill O'Brien in the offensive play calling, hey, give me the game. Dude. I'll take it over. And they had, they had some breaks. There were some officiating questionable oh, things. Yeah. And But, you know, Bryce just went Bryce, and that's why he was the number one pick in the draft. And Will Anderson was the you know third pick of the draft, and those two dudes were dudes. Uh, they're gone. New coordinators on both sides. So, and not saying Texas is going to win it, but if he could, the springboard that well, can be. And Saban's quarterback situation is very different. He we saw that other kid come in, and athletic as all get out. But he couldn't hit you for me if we're talking about it. Now, he's going to develop. Yeah. He's going to be better. But is he going to be Bryce? Is he going to be yeah. not, well? Jalen Milrow. Be even a, a yeah, is it going to be a true freshman or a freshman or Jalen Milrow, or the Jaylen kid from Houston? Yeah, one of those guys. So, they got some They got questions. questions. Whereas Texas, Which, Texas' yeah. question is, can they bring it? In the fourth quarter, can they yeah. finish a game? Uh, and can Sark, you know, elevate this program to the next level? Uh, obviously, Alabama a big litmus test, much like for you guys. And yeah. that was a, that was a national championship or bust season. I don't think th- this team reminds me more of the 04 team. Yeah, that can they take that next step? Vince Young, kind of in the Quinn Ewers role, that he gets doubted. Can he step forward? Now he's got pressure behind him with two good quarterbacks. And I'll say this for the Longhorns. The, the one thing I'll say when you when you talk about the, when the preseason polls come out, Quan, it's going to it's going to be Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State again. Yeah. But they're all replacing quarterbacks, every one of them. I mean, you're talking about, you know, uh, all three replacing quarterbacks. Doesn't mean they can't. I mean, Georgia's yeah. still loaded. Ohio State's got Marvin Harrison Jr. and a ton of dudes. Uh, they've got to replace a quarterback. The two teams that aren't replacing quarterbacks are Texas and USC. Yeah. And Pac-12 with Washington's a good, you know, that's a good good rival. Utah beat them twice last year. But Texas is in a Big 12 that's kind of wide open. If really? they could win that Alabama game. You know, sky's the limit at that point in my mind. But obviously, this is a team that went eight and four last year, so it's it's hard to get too far over. Eight and four would be John Robinson. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. but again, the four games were all winnable games in the fourth quarter that they let get away. Can they fix that? Because that's something you learned. You never lost a bowl game. Uh, Tremendously successful. The only like real heartbreaker was that 08 Tech game, and I don't want to bring that up to you. But but you guys knew how to finish. Heard on that. You guys knew how to finish football games. That's the thing. The mindset. You hope what developed this off season is. We have the dudes. I mean, we had them last year, Bijan, Roshan, all these guys. But pressure can make diamonds, pressure can bust pipes, and it bust pipes last year. Yeah. Let's hope the development psychologically is we're going to make some diamonds. And we're bringing in the Mitchells of the world who, again, back-to-back. He he can tell you how to rise up to that occasion and, and make plays and or he's going to be that dude himself. Quinn, throw it to that guy. He's not worried about any of this. Well, and, and so uh, those are the pieces, I think. When you you played wide receiver, of course, uh, into the NFL. But when you look at that group with Xavier Worthy, who should be healthy, 21 touchdowns in two seasons. He's already set the record at Texas. That's pretty yeah. good. Um, you know, A.D. Mitchell, back-to-back national championships, was huge in both, you know, college football Final Fours. Uh, Jordan Whittington's back. Um, you know, Isaiah Nayer is back and healthy. Jatavion Sanders. You know, this is an offense that should put a lot of stress on a defense, right? Yeah. So the quarterback's job, you know, and if pro football focus is right and it's the third best returning offensive line in the country, you should have a strong running game, uh, even without those two guys, yeah. which leads to, you know, play action. It's be a hard offense to stop. Man, you know my biggest worry, and this is me because I'm a worrier, there's so many weapons, and Sark is such a brilliant mind. As crazy as it is, I'm like, no, simplify it. <laughs> simplify it. Don't get so crazy and do too much to where the guys are thinking. Let these athletes play. Well, I was just watching the other night. The uh, I think it was one ESPN, one of the channels. They had the uh, Ohio State Alabama national championship game when Sark was the play caller, and it was fifty-two to twenty-four or whatever. Yeah. You no, know, Bryce Young just you know it was Mac Jones. Just just find the the weakness. Yeah, your third corner can't cover Xavier Worthy. Your 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 nickel yeah. corner can't cover Jordan. You know, that dude right there can't cover Jatavion Sanders. That's your matchup. That To your point about simplify it, make it easy on the quarterback. Make it easy. When, when, Where's when, the matchup problem? My senior year, when me and Chip started moving all over the place, that's all we were doing. We set it up. We called the offense. We had it. But then it, they'll put us in a slot together. They'll put us on the same side together. Yeah. And ultimately, we were just finding matchups 
And one of us was probably the main guy, unless they screwed up. So he'd run an option route. I'd go over. If they jump ship, boom, I'm open. Um, they pull back. He's running an option. He's, it, it really was. And I think Cole, let me see, was 79% completion yeah, yeah. that year. And so Set the college sim- record at the time. Simplified on that level. Exploit matchups. It's, it's still in the NFL. College. It's in the it's NFL. It's not the NFL, dude. And by the way, it's not, and that's why it's a better product. Yeah. The NFL cracks me up because we love it, and it's amazing athletes, and they – they're going to make Sports Center all the time because they're going to make the one-handed catch. But I think in the league, it blew my mind how everybody's a guru and they try to be a guru every week. And it's why you don't have the consistency. I always do this test to guys. I was like, name me 10 teams that win consistently in the NFL. And we usually get stuck on about seven. Yeah. And and that's kind of it's being a hard generous. league. And so it's it's not the NFL. We don't want to be that. Simplified, maybe not Coach Boone simplified, but simplified at a level. Use your guys and don't make it backyard. But what is Texas high school phenomenal at seven on seven? Almost do your own version of it and exploit those matchups, and I think we can do it pretty well. Make it easier on Quinn uh, or whichever the quarterback is. Because yeah. Texas always seems Quinn, to have it. Murphy, Manning, yeah, everybody has a, has an injury at quarterback, and uh, uh, if you can avoid that, uh, which is you know. Well, hope something you don't hope for, but this happens in a football season it's without football. a doubt. Uh, well, that's good stuff right there. Talking Texas football with Quan Cosby. He's a liaison to President Jay Hartzell, working in external affairs, also day job to selling corporate insurance, but also helping us here on the Eyes on Texas multicast. Last thing, and then I'll let you get out of here. We'll get into our third quarter and fourth quarter. Is uh, this the this set of receivers you mentioned? Ad Mitchell a couple times, Isaiah Nair. How good is this group? How good are these when you see them? I mean, uh, and Jordan Whittington comes back looks like with a chip on his shoulder. He should. I told Jay Witt, bro, if you don't have 80 catches this year and 10 touchdowns, I'm going to be annoyed. Now, that's all, not all up to him, but he wants it, and, and he does have that chip, and he decided to come back. Um, smart, smart of him. We had a long conversation about that. So, two things. On paper, Roy – I'm going to have to run from Roy Williams and BJ and Sloan. <laughs> um, uh, truly on paper, one to six, probably the best group to ever be in that room. Um, wow. Production, clearly, Ship, me, Brandon Collins, Swede, we've done a lot more for Texas. Um, Roy, BJ, Sloan, done a lot more for Texas. Kwame, um, Wayne McGarity, done yeah. a lot more. But on paper right now, if you throw in – you know, again, worthy Dante already at Cook, 21. Cook, oh, I mean, how good did he look in a spring game and his potential? On paper, one to six, not one to three, one to four. By far the best group I think we've had in the history of UT. And if they match what they're projected as, good lord. I mean, we're. I mean, how do you stop that many guys? Um, and, and and again, we like I said, we didn't talk about JT Sanders and man. He reminds me of Jermichael, you know, yeah. and, and truly. And I'm going to tell you this. And J. Mike became a phenomenal blocker in the NFL. He wasn't what J.T. <laughs> Sanders was in college. J. Mike had freaking – probably his nails done. He didn't want to mess that up. <laughs> but um, Sanders is a dog. I mean, he really is. And when I occasionally go down there to the sideline to hear his leadership. So, so much of what I'm talking about in my optimism is he's young, but I've heard him getting somebody's stuff. I forgot who – he told uh, – it was one of the players, and he was a senior too, and JT got on his butt about something and, and told him to not come out there. But um, just that level of leadership between the linemen, between JT, Jay Witt, and in years growing up as well, we, we hear the stories. He's chiseling down. That level of focus needs to happen. Football, <laughs> school is important. Get your degree. But football needs to mean something. If you want to win – at the D1 level, and certainly if you want to get to the next level. Quan Cosby, uh, good stuff right there. I remember you were talking about you know, with you and Jordan and keeping it simple. Remember the, the 45-35 Texas OU game when Greg Davis put Jordan Shipley in the like the, the tight end slot. He's at the Y. Yeah, he went to the slot, and Oklahoma had no clue. They didn't know how to deal with that. That was unbelievable. Brent I was sitting in the Cod Bowl going, they have no idea. Head coach at Texas now, he's still losing sleep over that game. It, it annoyed him. He didn't know what to do. It took them to go to base. They wouldn't even blitz, and and they just went to base because they didn't know where we were going to be or how we we're going to be, and so that that's that's the simplifying. We knew what to do anyway. We think like quarterbacks. We we talk to Colt every day and all day, and so simplifying it on that level and exploiting matchups, 
I mean that that that's that when I made the block and that play in the middle, ships he's not at Z, he's at Y. He goes over the middle because of what because they, they went to two two safety base and then uh Lindy Holmes felt the brunt of that. But, yeah. Um, one of the, nah, one of the great so that, blocks in Texas football those, history. Those things Did you get a penalty on that? No, heck no. Yeah. I would've been as now a you lovely fans love to say, you're gonna be getting a penalty. <laughs> Guess what? I'd be missing the next game because I'd do it again. Because it's o- <laughs> OU and I don't give to you know what. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, Texas OU, October 7th, this time around. The final time as members of the Big 12 Conference. Quan, thanks so much, man. Man, appreciate awesome it. Awesome stuff. Uh, our second quarter brought to you by Hayes City Store and Ice House. I'll tell you about them coming up. Uh, in our third quarter, we'll get into our spicy hot takes as well. Also, our fourth quarter, we'll get to the four, the final four big questions surrounding Texas football. Thank you, Quan. Thank you, brother. Hook them. Hook them. Appreciate Quan Cosby. Uh, I've actually met Hayes, uh, Quan Cosby at Hayes City Store and Ice House before. He's come out there to in- enjoy their scratch comfort food and have a cold drink and watch some games. It's a great spot. Listen, Hayes City Store is open for business. They're about uh, seven or eight years old now, and they're ready to serve you and your family. It's a destination location, certainly if you live in Kyle or Driftwood, Buda. Dripping Springs. It's an easy little drive over there, but uh, it's worth the drive this summer to get out there. Maybe get out to Wimberley as well. Spend some time on the river. Hey, City Store and Ice House quickly becoming famous for their uh, scratch Texas comfort food. Uh, they got the wood fired pizzas that are incredible. The house ground burgers, chicken fried steak, the you know, truck stop enchiladas are a must go to. It's one of those restaurants where you're not sure what to order. Every single time you're like, man, what am I going to get? I want all of it. Uh, they also have 53 beers on tap and so much more. It's on FM 150 and Driftwood in a perfect spot there uh, between Driftwood, Wimberley, Kyle, Buda right there. Uh, it is tremendous. Once you get on there, our friend Travis Tyndall, his wife Tamara, uh, they have also opened a new restaurant in downtown Buda, Texas, which is called Taste on Main. Higher end food, steaks and seafood and oysters. Wonderful spot, too. So either one, uh, looking for a, an anniversary, a birthday uh, dinner, uh, or just a good time, get to Hay City Store or I- and Ice House or Taste on Main in Buda. Great, great spots. If you're looking for that mouthwatering menu, uh, find it at Hay City Stores online at HayCityStoreTX.com. That's HayCityStoreTX.com, and I'll see you there. All right, time for our halftime segment. As we told you on the Eyes on Texas multicast, uh, coming up in the football season and we get to August and training camp, in our halftime segment we'll be talking with a lifetime Longhorn every single halftime and get an update where they are, uh, what they're up to. Maybe they're still in the NFL. Maybe they're doing things in the great city of Austin or around Texas or somewhere else. You're going to get to be catch up with Longhorn. That's what it's all about. Uh, and we just caught up with Quan Cosby throughout the course of about 40 minutes of conversation with QC. That was awesome. So now you know where Quan is and what he's doing with the University of Texas. And he is our uh, lifetime Longhorn tonight. And our halftime segments all season long where we talk to a lifetime Longhorn, get caught up, and find out and keep you up to date with how all the Longhorns are doing in the National Football League on a week-by-week basis is brought to you by One Source Gas of Austin. They are your Texas compressed gas leader. One Source Gas provides compressed gases such as CO2, nitrogen, oxygen, propane, and many more to various industries in the great state of Texas. They are your lead CO2 provider for the service and hospitality industry, also servicing the medical industry uh, and industrial industry as well. Uh, One Source Gas locally owned and operated. My good friend Richard Strever and his great team there, they've been in operation for a a dozen years or more now. They understand that exceptional customer service is key to your success when providing the products to run your business. If you run a bar or restaurant and your CO2 runs out, you can't run your bar or restaurant. Same thing with your medical issues as well. So bar or restaurant owners, a dental office, a veterinary clinic, and you have a business that has compressed gas needs and you're looking for a new CO2 or compressed gas provider, maybe you're frustrated with your current group, you can visit their website and get to know them. I promise you they're going to take care of you every single time. It's onesourcegasatx.com. That's onesourcegasatx.com. All one word. That's one source gas ATX.com or give them a call 214. 214- 8484. That's 512-214-8484. One of their friendly staff members, even Richard himself, will be glad to help you with your compressed gas needs. They'll be bringing you halftime throughout the course of the football season, certainly this summer as well. That's going to bring us into our third quarter. It's brought to you by our friends at uh, On Point Spice Company. We'll tell you all about them, but it's time in our third quarter. Our man Nolan Hogan joins us, our digital editor, and uh, brings us the spicy hot takes, the On Point Spices, spicy hot takes from college football. He scours the internet, finds interesting topics to talk about in the world of college football. It is June, Nolan, so there can be a t- tough time finding good stories. Summer, summer workouts are underway. There's su- spring and summer meetings going on. What are our spicy hot take conversations of this uh, episode nine? So we've got two hot takes for you. Uh, these were not very Twitter topics. I didn't find these on the internet. These are kind of came out of my own brain. So oh, boy. Watch out. These are 
Nolan's hot takes. These aren't Twitter hot takes. Uh, my number one hot take for this week is Xavier Worthy. This was a Quan Cosby. Uh, this is dedicated to him almost because I thought he would be around for this. But Xavier Worthy hitting a thousand yards above a thousand yards this season. I think since since his freshman year, he led the Big Twelve in touchdowns. He had eight hundred or nine hundred eighty-one yards. He was just third in the Big Twelve on sixty-two receptions. And then that was his freshman year, so his sophomore season broke broke his hand halfway through and still led the Big 12 in touchdowns with nine. And the reason I think this is the season he he breaks 1,000 is just all these additions. A.D. Mitchell, John T. Cook, Isaiah Nayor coming back healthy, along with Jordan Whittington. I think that just opens up the offense more, and I think, like like Quan was saying earlier, just simplifies it. If, if you got your DB2 covering Jordan Whittington, you don't have a guy covering Xavier Worthy who's running up a post, I think... I think that just opens up opportunities for Jonte to or Xavier Worthy to be scoring and putting up yards. Yeah, I think Texas fans, you know, I was at the Alamo Bowl. I know you were there too, Nolan, on the sidelines uh, against Washington. Fans were really frustrated with Isaiah, with uh, with Xavier. Uh, and it surprises me. I've been around this program as long as I have covering people like Quan and Roy Williams and Sloan Thomas. And you know, Xavier's one of the most successful young wide receivers I've ever seen uh, at Texas. I mean, he's 21 touchdowns. He set the record over two seasons for a Texas player. But, yeah, he dropped some balls last year, and he turns out he had a broken hand. And, you know, we can get after Sark for, you know, leaving him in there. But, uh, look, I think Coach Sarkeesian – uh, I want to say panics a little, panicked a little bit, but when Isaiah Nayer got hurt, that changed Xavier Worthy's role last year. He was supposed to be the slot guy. He was supposed to be the uh, Devontae Smith in that Alabama offense or Jalen Waddle when it was there. He's going to be in the slot. He's going to drive you crazy with his route running, his quickness. And Isaiah Nayer was going to take the top off of defenses and become that big play guy down the field uh, with Jordan Whittington as the, as the second or third guy. And then, of course, Isaiah got hurt. And I think that forced a change where Isaiah or Xavier, excuse me, Xavier Worthy became the deep guy and the slot guy, and he needed to be a little bit of everything. And I thought, uh, you know, he also had a young quarterback in Quinn Ewers who was trying to learn the system and uh, figure things out himself. Uh, so that, I think that played into a little bit in his frustrations. And I would agree at times for fans that at times Xavier's body language wasn't great. He looked like he was kind of hung dog and frustrated. And there was talk that maybe he wanted to transfer and things of this nature in the portal era that we live in. Uh, but man, I think he comes back with a chip on his shoulder. I agree with you 100%. The only reason I say he doesn't get to 1,000 is that just have so many options, but I think he will. In this day and age of college football, he's too good of a route runner. He's too precise of a player. And he's going to be back to playing his natural position and be healthy. Cross your fingers. So, agree. Uh, Xavier Worthy over 1,000 yards. And I think, you know, this is a guy that's going to rewrite the record book receiving at Texas. We just had Quan Cosby in here with Jordan Shipley and uh, Roy Williams. I mean, this guy will rewrite the record book. He's already at 21 touchdowns, folks. And, you know, he could put 10, 12 more on the board this year in this offense uh, with, with Quinn Ewers or whoever's throwing in the football. I agree with you 100%. Okay, and uh, the second spicy hot take I have for this one is going to the defensive side. I said I thought the the, te- the Texas defensive back room will be the most improved position on the defense in 2023. The reason being is just they, they have some returners that were very impactful last year. I think Terrence Brooks in, the, in that bowl game in the Alamo Bowl played a hell of a game. I think he, he really put a name for himself. Ryan Watts had a great season. Jade Barron, I mean, he, he he made plays against UTSA, he changed that game into a two-score game and kind of opened that game up. So I think him coming back and having the additions like Malik Muhammad and Jalen Catalan, Gavin Holmes, Derek Williams Jr., who they those two freshmen, Malik and Derek Williams, both have potential to make an impact in year one. Yeah, I think, well, here's one thing with, with Coach Sark. You can tell over into his third year, he doesn't want to be – left with his pants down in a position. We just talked about that at wide receiver last year where an injury, one injury, really impacted that team. Uh, and I think secondary last year, injuries impacted that team. Uh, and and that, that position, especially I go to the Oklahoma State game where they really couldn't get people on the ground and didn't cover very well, and they were down to, you know, the Michael Tafts of the world were forced onto the field to try to play. And that's a game Texas should have won. They should have won that football game. Uh, even in the Washington game, the secondary struggled. I agree with you about Terrence Brooks, though, being a difference maker. Uh, Ryan Watts coming back uh, as as that boundary corner to be that physical you know, short side of the field guy. Uh, Jaron Thompson is back. Jade Barron is back. You mentioned Jalen Catalan. Gavin Holmes is a big one. He comes in from Wake Forest, where there's a two-year starter in the ACC. Uh, he can really play. Uh, all accounts through the spring and into the summer, he is one of the best athletes out there, one of the fastest players. Yeah, I think uh, I think Texas is trying to shore up positions where they're, they're getting to too deep. Because if you look at what separates Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, the great programs from the rest, is they're too deep. If they have an injury, 
they're all right. Like, look at Georgia last year. They had first-round draft picks. Nolan Smith yeah. getting hurt, uh, but they still had one of the best defenses in the country. When you can build that kind of depth, I'm not saying Texas is there yet, but you can see where Sark is going. Uh, offensive line is much deeper. Quarterback room is deeper. Uh, wide receiver room and secondary for sure, a lot deeper for Texas. And I agree with you. That's a chance to be the most improved part of the team. And if it is, well, let me say one more thing with, when we had Quan Cosby in here. When those defensive backs are having to cover these wide receivers that Quan just told you might be the best one to six group that Texas has ever had on paper, well, they're going to get better because they're going to be tested every day in practice against the X-Mans and the Nayers and the Whittingtons of the world. That's, you know, when you go back to the old school days when Quan was there, they would say the practices were the easiest part. They'd get to the game and be like, oh, man. This guy's not Roy Williams. What are you talking about? This guy's not Sloan Thomas. I got this. This isn't Quan or Jordan Shipley. I can cover this dude. So that becomes the optimistic part. A lot of things to like about the secondary. Agree with you. Most improved position on the field, I would say yes to that. I also think quarterback is going to be in that realm. Uh, you hope it is because the ceiling for this Texas football team, as we've talked about over and over again on this Eyes on Texas multicast, powered by Grande Equipment, is the ceiling and depends on quarterback. Uh, if Quinn Ewers elevates they're going to be fine uh, because I think the defense improves. I think the offensive is going to be better than last year and more dynamic. Uh, really, it comes down to the quarterback pulling the trigger if they're going to go play for and win a Big 12 championship. Good stuff. That is our third quarter spicy hot takes conversation. Uh, if you don't know about On Point Spice Company, I want you to learn about them. They're a local small business started by my guys James Joseph and Adrian Ruiz. Uh, they produce top quality spice blends. They're an absolute must in every home and barbecue pit, especially now. Into the summer, it's grilling and smoking season, and certainly into the fall and football and tailgate season. They have two spice blends right now at On Point, and you need to check them out. They're available right now. They're incredible top shelf steak and more. It is the last steak seasoning or seasoning you're going to ever need. It's going to replace your all of your spices in your spice rack. It's phenomenal on fillets, ribeyes, sirloins, T-bones, whatever cut of meat. It's also great on grilled veggies. You want to throw that on there? We use it all the time. We don't on anything for just basic seasoning. It's everything in one, and it is phenomenal. Again, that is your um, their, their, their top shelf steak and more. Top shelf steak and more on Point Spice Company. And if you're a griller and a smoker, their AR Barbecue Pitmaster Rub from On Point is a grand champion rub that Adrian Ruiz has spent 20 plus years in the making. You can now add it to your pit and your spice rack. It's wonderful on your briskets, your chicken, your ribs, pork shoulder, whatever you're smoking. It's also uh, a little tip here. Uh, it's great on the rim of your favorite Bloody Mary. In the morning after or cooking up all night, you need that Bloody Mary in the morning. Uh, that AR Barbecue Pitmaster Rub is phenomenal. You know, more information, just go to their great little website there, onpointspices.com. That's onpointspices.com. Our good friend James, our good friend Adrian, appreciate them for bringing you the spicy hot takes. And Nolan, that's going to take us into our fourth quarter, and that is uh, all about the top four, the final four big story surrounding Texas football. And is that time of year? Kind of got to dig for stories. And uh, we found some good ones here because uh, I mentioned with Quan Cosby that the Texas offensive line by Pro Football Focus ranked as the third best returning unit in all of college football. Now that seems crazy, right? But at the same time, this was a, a group that was had three freshmen starting last year, but, but performed pretty well. I think anybody would tell Texas, uh, anybody that watched Texas would say B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson helped make that offensive line maybe perform a little better than, than, they, than they, you know, maybe were. But they're a year better. And the, the Kelvin Banks numbers are staggering. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who faced 812 dropbacks last year uh, or, and gave up 12 pressures. Four first-round picks, zero sacks. Zero sacks that he faced last year as a true freshman. True freshman. Kelvin Banks, I mean, you start using the word... If he stays healthy, you know, prodigy kind of player uh, who's on the fast track. And then the four first-round picks you mentioned, uh, Will Anderson was the third pick of the draft. Uh, Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech was a top-10 pick to the Vegas Raiders. Um, you know, gosh, Felix uh, Uduke Uzoma uh, from Kansas State was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. No sacks, mm -hmm. no pressures against Texas. Uh, you know, his run blocking needs to improve. I think it will. Kelvin Banks has that desire. And in any NFL or college or high school offensive line, if your left tackle is that caliber, it anchors everything. It's like the closer in a bullpen. If you've got that dude, everything else lines up, especially when you put Christian Jones on the other side. Jake Major's a three-year starter at center. Uh, the, the competition's going to be really at guard who emerges, and they got dudes to to fight for it. Uh, I, I, is it the third best returning? I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen Georgia mash people, Ohio State, uh, Alabama. i got to see it, but I, I, I see where they're going here. And they, you know, PFF, Pro Football Focus, uses metrics and grades, and this isn't just speculation. They look at the numbers. So that's pretty impressive. And if Michigan, that's the case— Michigan was number one on that, correct? Michigan was number one. That is correct. And Jim Harbaugh has just— 
you know, kind of like Notre Dame. Right. You know, they just build great offensive linemen. So that's one of the top four final stories. Uh, third best O-line. That may be over the skis, but again, it's pro football focus. Very, very reputable. How about also this one, uh, the Athlons, all the, all the new uh, college football magazines are going to be coming out here uh, in the summer, uh, previewing the season. Athlons is one of the better ones. And in Athlons, they, they had a, uh, in their part of their season preview, a little sneak peek came out, and it was from an anonymous Big 12 assistant coach who told Athlon Sports, uh, when asked about his opinion of the Longhorns, he said, quote, they could get scary good if Quinn plays the way he's capable of. They're really close to collecting an offense and playing up to that standard of, of Stark, Sark as far as an offensive team goes. Losing Bijan is a serious blow, no doubt, but this is the kind of scheme and the kind of roster where you just adjust to the other talent and you don't try to fill the hole. There's so much talent there at tight end and receiver, they're going to burn some teams. And that's back to our conversation. That is a uh, the Athlon Sports Anonymous Big 12 assistant coach knowing. And I think it's fair to say, you know, when Mike Craven's here, and as he will be and back with us next week, uh, he goes around and talks to the Big 12 coach or the coaches in the state of Texas, not just Big 12, but, you know, the, the, the schools that are outside. And uh, Mike always reports back that they always ask about Texas. What's going on in Austin? What's going on in Austin? And, you know, we all know it, that Texas is underachieved for quite a while now. There's been a, a what the heck's going on? How are they not competing at a higher level? Uh, but there's also the idea that when it gets right, it gets unbeatable at some level. It gets really, really hard to take down uh, because when the talent matches the coaching or the coaching matches the talent, as Quan Cosby just said to you earlier in this multicast, when the talent matches the development and players are improving and players are getting better and players are bought in, Texas can be a gorilla. I mean, and that's so all Big 12 teams are always trying to, to wonder. Also, uh, our, our fourth and final story in our final four, uh, Texas Tech coach Joey McGuire. Joey McGuire did a radio interview recently and said he hopes the regular season finale against Texas Tech has Big 12 title implications. That's been announced as the Black Friday game, day after Thanksgiving. It's going to be a night game. And uh, he said uh, in the interview he's really enjoyed getting to know uh, Steve Sarkeesian. Of course, Joey McGuire, great high school coach, coached at Baylor with Matt Rule on his way to Texas Tech, and he's really fired up the fan base at Texas Tech. And Texas Tech, Nolan, comes back with a very veteran team. Uh, they're an older team. I know they lost Tyree Wilson to the draft, but they've got dudes, and they got a quarterback in Tyler Shuck, who's 23 years old. Uh, kind of remind you, just as far as their age, of TCU a little bit last year. Just a lot of returning players that played a lot of college football. Uh, I don't think they're as talented as what TCU was, but you know, veterans and experience can win out over talent sometimes just because they know the, the way of the world. And uh, Joey McGuire said, uh, as, as far as Sark said, he really is. I really enjoyed getting to know him at meetings. It would really be great if that game against Texas on November 24th was to determine who was going to the Big 12 game. I think it's going to be. I think that game at the end of the year is going to be a special game. I think both fan bases are excited for it. I'll flip back the spicy hot takes with you, Nolan. Mm -hmm. Will that game? be for the Big 12 championship or a trip to it. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, with the shape, with how the Big 12 is shaping, with OU kind of on the downtrend and new teams coming in, I could see, I could definitely see how Texas Tech comes to that game and, and implications with us to go to that Big 12 championship game. And it, with the talent they had, like you said, and Joey McGuire in his third season now, is he's got the head on straight on all those guys. So I think Second year. Second year. Second year. I remember last year in year one, well, he took over midseason. Okay. Of two years ago, he came in second full um, season. and when Matt Wells was dumped just to get the lay of the land. But he, his first full season was last year. Uh, beat Texas, they beat Oklahoma, they won their bowl game over an SEC team, and they were an eight-win squad. So I think there's a lot of optimism. And yeah, I do. You know, I, I know last year in 2022, my push for Texas was: can that Baylor game at the end of the year mean a trip to the Big 12 title game? Texas came one game away from that. Coughing up the Tech game in Lubbock, coughing up the Oklahoma State game, um, you know, just just cost them because that game would have been for a trip to the Big Twelve title game if they had won one of those, figured out one of those fourth quarters. Obviously, the TCU game at home was a loss, but those two games in Stillwater and Tech were very winnable. I lost both of them. They win one of the goes. That Baylor game would have been for the Big Twelve title. That's going to be the step for Texas. Is does that t does that Texas Tech game culminate a great season? And I agree with Joey. I think both fan bases are pretty fired up. Uh, for that to be the case. Uh, all right, that is your fourth quarter. Those are your final four. We also had our spicy hot takes. Appreciate Quan Cosby. 40, 45 minutes of really, really great Texas football, Texas Athletic Department conversation. Uh, tonight's show has been brought to you by Grande Equipment and powered by Grande Equipment, an independent, locally owned equipment dealer. I told you off the top of the show, Wes and his team, Wes Murray, Weston, they understand that your reputation is all you have. If you have a project, uh, big or small, 
uh, and you need equipment, all that matters is getting it done, getting it done on time, on budget, uh, on scale. That's why Grande partners with you on every project. Just getting the, the you're earning your business is just the start of that relationship. They've operated that way for 31 years. They're not in the equipment business as much as they're in the relationship business. When you need the right piece of equipment for your project, they'll get you what you want. They'll get it to you quickly without hassles or any uncertainty of it being job site ready. And as an independent dealer, uh, they can get you equipment from all major manufacturers, Caterpillar, John Deal, Komatsu, Volvo, and more. Heavy equipment, sales and rentals, they are the best. It's Grande Equipment. I always say they're small and independent, but they play in the big leagues in a big way. They also have a new renewable, renewable energy sector that supports solar projects all over the country, especializing in pile driver application with both new and used equipment and the capability of renting statewide and nationally. They specialize in all sorts of equipment. Uh, even uh, dealers and use, wholesalers and users all around Texas, all around the world. They are your international independent dealer. Find them at grandeequipment.com. That's grandeequipment.com. Remember, Grande doesn't overpromise. They overdeliver, and they bring you the Eyes on Texas multicast, and we can't thank them enough each and every week for being our title sponsor. Also, thank you to our other uh, sponsors tonight, One Source Gas of Austin, your one-stop shop for all Central Texas gas products, uh, the good times and incredible scratch food at Hayes City Store and Ice House, On Point Spices, the spice blend and rub that will place everything in your spice rack. Carlos Carrion, of course, the Texas Mortgage Guy. That's the thetexasmortgageguy.com. And remember, the Eyes on Texas multicast that keeps you on top of all things Texas football, a product of the Republic of Texas football on the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Podcast Network, powered by Grande Equipment. And you'll be able to find us on YouTube at the Dave Campbell's Texas Football page, on hornfm.com's YouTube page as well here in Austin. Read all of Mike Craven's stuff at uh, Dave Campbell's Texas Football.com. His great stories. The new magazine is coming out in July. Of course, you can hear me each and every weekday morning on the Horn in Austin, the Longhorn flagship station uh, at hornfm.com, 6 a.m. to 10. We'll be back for another episode, episode 10 of the Eyes on Texas Multicast, powered by Grande Equipment, next week. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you to